The Old Bailey, London. It's the close of the trial of Terence Riley. How long do you think they'll be? Oh, the jury may be out for two hours. Seems rather a long time to take. Just to establish a man's innocence. <laughs> You're an optimist, Riley. Meanwhile, the other Riley, Terence's brother Patrick, was on his way to start a prison sentence of 15 years hard labor. You're getting off a bit lighter than your brother felt. Oh, he's not been sentenced yet, my friend. He will be. Don't worry. <laughs> I think we're getting near our station. You better get your case done. Oh! is going to wipe the smile right off your face. <laughs> it's going to be hard to do that. This is my red letter day. <laughs> yeah? Well, then get ready for a shock. Patrick Riley has escaped. What? You're kidding. I wish I was. The news has just come through that he jumped the train. Now, listen. The assistant commissioner has suggested I call you in on this. You know the Riley brothers as well as anyone. I mean their background and everything. So I want you to try and help us locate him. I can't do a thing until this evening. I've got a most pressing engagement. What's that? A football game. Hello? If you want to know Patrick Riley's hideout, come to number six, Clank Terrace, tonight or day to What? Who are you? Hello? Hello? Clarence Terrace. Here we are. Six Clarence Terrace. Madame Defargo, medium. Oh, sounds sort of a clairvoyant. Hmm. There might be something in it. I left a note for Mr. Morley, but he won't be in till tonight. I, I wonder if I could go along myself. Well, I don't like it. She may be a friend of the family. I'd send a man along with you, but they'd smell a rat. Then I'll go. Well, then take care of yourself. And let me have a report as soon as you know anything. All right, I will. Good luck. Good evening. Will you come in? Oh, I'm Mr. Morley's assistant. Mr. Morley couldn't come. Is is Madame Defargo at home? Yes. She's holding a seance. She'd like you to go in. Will you be very quiet? Yes. Yes, I will. The stranger will please join us. Stranger is worried and perplexed. She is anxious to locate someone, an enemy. In order to do so, we will call the spirit of a victim. Will the stranger name such a spirit? Cynthia Quelch. I call the spirit of Cynthia Quelch. Can you hear me? Cynthia Quelch, I call upon you to answer. Cynthia Quelch, answer me. I am here. What do you want of me? There is a stranger here who desires to avenge your death. She must know the location of the man who conspired to kill you. Where is he now? Speak, spirit. Speak. Someone in this room is working against us. There is a conflict of thought. There is one person present who does not desire the thoughts of Cynthia Quelch to be received. 
She will not speak while that person remains in this room. We will now sit in complete darkness to give the person concerned an opportunity to leave the room without revealing his or her identity. Eileen, call Inspector Cranshaw. Don't touch anything, anybody. She did. Yes. Is there anyone else here besides you three? No, no one. Hello, Inspector Cranshaw. This is Eileen Trotter. I'm at number six Clarence Terrace. Can you come round right away, please? I, I think there's been a murder. Keep them there. I'll be right over. Nobody went into the hall, so the murderer is still in this room. One of you. How long have you known Madame Defargo? About two years. I take it you believe in spiritualism, Mrs. Corbett? If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. Would you say that Madame Defargo was a genuine medium? Oh, I certainly would. And you can think of no reason why anyone would want to murder her? No. Well, I think that's all for the time being, Mrs. Corbett. I have your phone number. We'll be getting in touch with you again. May I go now? You may. Thank you. Thank you. Ask Mr. Earl to come in, Sergeant, please. Very good, sir. There's no doubt that one of these three is trying to protect our friend Patrick Riley. Hadn't you better get someone to watch that woman? Don't worry. I will. Mr. Earl, sir. This is very embarrassing for me, gentlemen. It's very embarrassing for everybody, Mr. Earl. Sit down, will you? I'd like to ask you a few questions. At the time this woman was killed, there were four people in this room besides herself. One of these people, maybe two or even three, had a motive for murdering her. Now, Mr. Earl, all we want to do is to get at facts which will help us to clear up this trouble. Go ahead. Did you know Mr. Blair or Mrs. Corbett before tonight? No. But you were personally acquainted with Madame Defargo. Naturally. I mean, as a friend. Well, I've known her for some years. Did she ever mention a man named Terence Riley? Not to me. Have you heard of him? Hasn't he just been sentenced to death? Yes, he's awaiting execution. You may also know of his brother Patrick, who escaped from a police escort today. Yes, I, I did read about it. Why did you come here tonight, Mr. Earl? As a matter of fact, it was mainly curiosity. Madame Defargo has asked me to her seances several times, but privately I've always laughed at them. I had no ulterior motive, if that's what you mean. I didn't mean that. Mr. Earl, can you think of anyone who might have a reason for murdering Madame Defargo? I can't think of anyone definitely, but I know who might suggest. Yes, who? Young Blair. Why? I know Madame Defargo disliked him coming here. Then why did she let him? He's a friend of Mrs. Corbett. I dare say Madame didn't want to offend her. Is Blair a close friend of Mrs. Corbett? I believe so. Well, I think that's all for now, Mr. Earl. Thank you. Do you want me to stay? No, you can go home. Thanks for your cooperation. We'll have Mr. Blair now, Sergeant. Very good, sir. I think this one will be a little difficult. Think so? Mr. Blair, sir. Take a seat, Mr. Blair. No, thanks. I'm not staying long. I'll decide that, if you don't mind. Well, what do you want to know? I understand you're a close friend of Mrs. Corbett. Is that true? Who told you? I said, is that true? It might be. That's better. Cigarette. There's no need to get hot under the collar, Mr. Blair. We're just trying to do a job, that's all. Don't try to pin anything on me, copper. Such as? Don't kid me, I know why I'm here. All I have to say to you is, you'd better look for somebody else. I didn't kill her. You're anticipating things. We haven't even suggested that you did yet. Who murdered her, Blair? How do I know? Because you're a pretty fly bird. You killed me. You've got something on your mind, so you might as well tell us what it is. 
You're Morley, aren't you? Yes. You came here tonight expecting to hear something about Patrick Riley. That's right. Well, oh, perhaps I can tell you why the old girl wanted you to know where he is. Go ahead. Might give us a lead. That's what I was thinking. Madame de Fargo is the sister of John Fraser. Didn't Terence Riley murder him some time back? Yes, you're quite right. Why make such a point of that? Of course, you wouldn't have any love for the Riley family. Terence or Patrick doesn't make any difference. Terence is due to get his and Patrick's on the run. I know all about it. Whoever murdered her did it to stop her giving Patrick Riley's hideout away. Probably. Probably nothing. It sticks out a mile. How did you know that Madame de Fargo was John Fraser's sister? Mrs. Corbett told me. Mrs. Corbett? Do you mean to say she didn't tell you? Perhaps you forgot to mention it. Don't make me laugh. Didn't want you to know for some reason. You better watch old Corbett. If you're looking for motive, you might find she's got one. You mean she's a friend of Patrick Riley? I didn't say that, but she might be. She was very anxious to come here tonight. She knows all about Riley. If you ask me, she's probably taking money from him. Speaking of money, what do you do for a living? Me? Why, I'm in business. What kind of business? Do I have to answer all these questions? You don't have to, but if you take my tip, you will. Okay. I don't see what it's got to do with all this, but... Well, I sell things. Such as nylon stockings. You got me all wrong, mister. Anything but nylons. Nothing else you want to ask me? No, not now. And leave your address with the sergeant when you go out. Sure. There's a nasty piece of work, if you like. Seems very anxious to pin something on that Corbett woman. I wonder why. I wonder. There's something that tells me that Madame de Fargo was a fake. You mean someone was imitating Cynthia Quelch's voice? Yeah. Didn't it sound like her? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't here. What did it sound like, Eileen? Well, it, it didn't sound like anybody I knew. It was a woman's voice. That was all I could be sure of, but it... It was distorted. As though it was coming over a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker? Cranshaw. This looks like a piece of patchwork, and look, it's, it's perforated in the middle. Look at that. Excuse me, sir. The maid has disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean? She was here a few minutes ago, asked if she could go down to the kitchen. I thought she was a rather long time, so I went to find out. I hadn't coated gone, so I think she must have slipped out the back way. That tallies with the microphone. Hey, Crenshaw, look through there. You can see through to another room. The maid was Cynthia's voice. She stood in the next room and talked into the mic. Then something scared her, and she's gone. Send out her description, Sergeant. She can't have got far. And have her picked up for questioning. Very good, sir. The next day, I made a few inquiries about Mr. Leslie Earle. It appeared that he owned a stall in Berwick Market. He specialized in the sale of silk stockings. Earle merely owned the stall, and the young man I spoke to operated it. I selected a pair of stockings that matched up very well with the one used to strangle Madame de Fargo. Had I but known it at the time, the stockings I had purchased were also to match up with another one, used for a second murder. Oh, switchboard, may I have a line, please?
Oh, switchboard. I've been trying to get a regent 04593. The name is Morley. This is the detective agency. Uh, would you check, please, to make sure that is the right number? Yes, I'll hold on. Any messages? No, the phone was ringing when I came in, but it stopped before I could get to it. Oh. Why, Mr. Morley, how sweet of you. Don't get so excited. They aren't for you. At least, not yet. Well, those last two words are encouraging anyway. What size are they? Nine. Oh, they'll do five. Where on earth did you get them? The stall in Berwick Market. Would you say they were unusual? Unusual? Well, yes, they're, they're glass nylons. Pretty hard to get. Those black seams are unusual, too. Hello? Inspector Cranshaw. Morley here. Morley? I'm at Mrs. Corbett's flat. 132 White's Court... Baker Street. Can you come over right away? Good. You've been dead for about 30 minutes. Strangled. Do you want to move the body now? No, leave it for the time being. All right, I'll be getting back. Thank you, Doctor. Will you come in, please? Sit down, Mrs. Cullen. Now, I wonder whether you can help me. Could you tell me anything about this woman's friends or acquaintances? I don't think she had many friends. She was rather a lonely sort of woman. Hmm. Did she mention uh, Madame Defargo? The medium? Yes. She was probably the only really close friend she had. Oh. What about a young man named Quentin Blair? Did he visit her? He's about 28, fairly tall, dark hair, quite good looking. I don't suppose you'd have many visitors like that. You'd remember him if you'd seen him. As a matter of fact, somebody answering to that description rented a flat off me a few days ago. He was recommended by Mrs. Corbett. What did you say the name was? Quentin Blair. That wasn't the name he gave me. It was Henry Preston. Oh. Does he live in the flat himself? Yes. But he went away early this morning. Said he wouldn't be back until tonight. Does anybody live with him? Not to my knowledge. I should like to look at this flat. Would you mind showing it to me, please? I don't like to do that with the tenant away. But I suppose I haven't any alternative. Well, that's entirely up to you. If you refuse, I shall have to go and get a search warrant. So it doesn't make much difference, really. You boys got everything you want? Uh, yes, thanks, sir. Uh, shall we get back to the yard? Uh, no, hang on for Mr. Morley, will you? Tell him I shan't be a second. And perhaps you'd uh, lift Mrs. Corbett onto the divan, will you? All right, sir. Nasty business, this, Mr. Morley. Mr. Cranshaw's just examining another flat. He won't be a couple of minutes. You waiting to get away? I'd like to develop my place. All right. Another silk stocking murder. Going to be a habit. Is this the one? Yep. Matches with the other one. Same type exactly. Oh, that's probably the other half. Yeah. It also matches with these. I bought them at a stall owned by Leslie Earle. Well, does that mean anything? They're pretty common, aren't they? Not in this country. Try buying a pair for your wife sometime. You questioned anybody yet? Yes, the landlady. 
This man Earl. Do you think we ought to pull him in? Oh, if he's the murderer, I can't imagine him being stupid enough to use anything like these. They're too easily traceable. What do the landlady say? She's been showing me a flat rented by a gentleman who calls himself Henry Preston. But I found this in it. Mrs. Corbett. They seem pretty thick, don't they? The dearest Quentin, the fondest love, Doris. That little heel obviously had her right where he wanted her. I found it at the bottom of the drawer. He'd probably forgotten it. Yes? All right, Reynolds. Thank you. One of my chaps has located Madame Defargo's maid. He saw her get into a taxi, but then he lost her. Anyway, he got the taxi's number, so she'll probably be picked up. Do you want to have a look around? Yeah. My telephone number on this. What? It's queer. Looks as though she was trying to ring me. I wonder. Might have had something to do with last night's murder. Or perhaps she decided to tell me where Riley's hiding. She had a pretty good chance to tell us that last night. Yes. Unless something happened to scare her in the meantime. A threat of some kind. You mean Quentin Blair? All right, young lady. We'll have a talk, shall we? No, I don't know anything. Please let me go. All in good time. Come on, take it easy. Now, suppose you tell us what you're doing here. I came to see Mrs. Corbett. Who sent you? No one. Mrs. Corbett is dead. She's been murdered. Murdered? You'd better tell me why you came to see her. Is that... Now, suppose you tell us why you came. Sit down. They're not on my head. Now, let's have the truth. We know you imitated Cynthia Quilch's voice at the seance last night. Why? Madam asked me to. Did she give any reason? No. What did you run away for? I was frightened. That's what this affected me. You told Quentin Blair what Madame Defargo had asked you to do, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, because you knew she was going to reveal Patrick Riley's whereabouts. I suppose Blair took you out a couple of times, made love to you. You promised to spy on Madame Defargo. When she made this arrangement with you, you told him all about it. Were you afraid of Blair? Yes. He threatened me. What do you know about his association with Mrs. Corbett? I believe she gave him money. Mrs. Corbett found out where Patrick Riley was staying and told Madame Defargo. That's right, isn't it? Yes, she did. How do you know? I overheard her telling Madame. You mean Blair told you to listen? The only way he could stop Madame Defargo from giving away Riley's hideout was to go to the seance himself. Yes. Do you know where Blair is now? Can you reach him by telephone? Yes. Right. Call him. Tell him where you are and ask him to come along here immediately. No. No, I couldn't do it. Why not? I just can't do it. I see. If he knows you're with Mrs. Corbett, he'll think you're cooking up a scheme to betray Riley. Is that right? Yes. Did Blair ever ask you to buy stockings in Berwick Market? <laughs> you did buy them, didn't you? You may not have realized it, but one of those stockings you bought was used by someone to murder Madame Defargo. What did you do with them? I left them in Quentin's flat two days ago. Last night, after Madame was murdered, I returned to the flat and found one of them missing. Did you make a thorough search of Blair's flat? Yeah. You didn't find the other stocking? No. Blair used one of them deliberately. By getting this kid to buy them in Berwick Market, he hoped to implicate Earl. What makes you think that Blair would come here, even if we were to telephone him? I don't believe he knows that Mrs. Corbett is dead. Oh, I get it. The second stocking was used by somebody else. The landlady told me Blair hasn't been here all day. That means somebody else has access to the flat. I wouldn't mind betting that somebody else is Patrick Riley. What? His hideout was Blair's flat, right here in this building. All right, Blair. Where's Riley? I don't know. Well, you better tell me or we'll be pinning a murder on you. Your girlfriend's told us everything else, Blair. Why, you just... No, they're lying. What are you trying to protect him for? Money? Look. Riley killed her, didn't he? He killed her and fixed it so we would think it was you. Now will you tell us where he is? All right. 
He just left my apartment. He came in with me to pick up something and went straight out again. Me too. He's heading for the docks. There's a ship leaving in about three hours' time. What's it called? The Grimdike. Norwegian. Is that on the level? Of course it is. We'll pick him up, all right. There's plenty of time before the boat sails. Quentin Blair, I'm arresting you on a charge of murder. Murder? You must be crazy. You told me yourself, Riley killed her. The murder of Madame Defargo. And I must warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. And you can come along too, young lady. Come on. Patrick's future was bleak. Whilst resuming his sentence of hard labor on one charge, he was also awaiting trial on another. Three weeks later, as is the custom in Her Majesty's prisons, the notice certifying the execution of Terence Riley was posted on the prison gates. Like most criminals, Terence Riley imagined he was beyond the reach of the law. But like all of them, he was wrong. Thank you.